Okay, today let's come on to our backs. Uh, soles of the feet on the mat, and we'll start with the soles of the feet wide and the knees touching. So knock the knees together, arms can be down by the sides, close the eyes. And so we have somebody in the live stream that's dealing with a head cold. I thought I would just give some cues in case someone else is, or if you just know, you know, down the line, if, if that's you, these, there are some things you can do with your practice. If you're feeling well enough, sometimes when we lie down on our backs, we start to cough, putting something underneath your head to elevate your head helps. So pillow blanket, um, that sort of thing could be a nice alternative to having your head flat on the mat. Take a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Two more like that. Deep breath in, lift the belly, then the chest. And exhale out through the mouth, let it go. Inhale in through the nose. back out through the mouth. This time in through the nose, come into your Ujjayi breath, back out through the nose. Keep going with this one. So with the eyes closed, Feeling the shape of the legs, continue on with your breath, keep that going, but the shape of the legs, so you have the knees together and the feet wide. The hips are internally rotated, so they're not rolling out, they're rolling in. And you're also just seeing the mobility in the knees, so you have the feet wider than the knees. So just take in that sensation with the eyes closed, lying on your back seeing what this feels like. Start to heel toe the feet back to hip width distance. Lift the knees up. So now the knees are right over the hips. Lift the feet up so the feet are in line with the knees and then bring the hands to the thighs to keep the knees right over the hip. So sometimes the knees wanna come in toward the chest. You're pushing them away from you. Keep those knees, the inner knees pressing in toward one another. Now widen the feet as wide as you can without losing the connection between the knees. So we're just changing what we were doing before, before the feet were down on the mat. Now you have the feet lifted and you're truly testing the mobility of the knees. So knees touching, keep the hands pressing the thighs away from you. Core might even be turning on at this point. All right, bring the feet back together, feel the difference, interlace the fingers back behind the head, rest the head in the hands. Let's straighten the legs. So feet are straight up over the hips, legs are straight. Take an inhale where you are. On the exhale, lift the upper body up and away from the mat. Inhale back, exhale up. Inhale back, exhale up. Inhale back, exhale up, inhale back, exhale up. Stay up, reach the arms up. Reach up as high as you can with the upper body without bringing the arms closer to the legs. See if you can lift the hips up a tiny bit and then set the hips back down, interlace the fingers back behind the head, rest the head back down onto the mat. Take an inhale. Exhale, lift up, inhale back, exhale, lift, inhale back, exhale, lift, inhale back, exhale, lift, stay up, reach the arms up, keep the hands in line with the shoulders, reach up as high as you can, lift the hips up without bringing the legs closer, it's a tiny movement and hug the knees in toward the chest, rest the head. You can rock side to side for a moment. Set the feet 
back down onto the mat, roll over to your right side, use the hands to bring yourself up to tabletop, all fours, hands and knees. And set up for cat cow. When you're ready, uh, stack the shoulders over the wrist, hips over the knees. On the inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail. On the exhale, round the whole spine, chin and toward the chest. Keep going on your own several rounds at your own pace following your own breath rhythm. One more cycle. Come back to a neutral spine. Keep the hips right over the knees. Bring the forearms down to the mat. Hug the belly in. Notice how you get more space in the lower back when you hug the belly in. Release the belly. Let the belly come down toward the mat. Do you feel how that curve lands in the lower back? You want to keep it straight. So hug the belly in. Keep the lower back straight. Start to reach the heart forward. Walk the elbows forward. Don't take the hips with you. Hips stay right over the knees. Forehead comes down to the mat. So we're in puppy dog on a Hatasana. First back bend. Take it easy. Maybe you bring the hands together and back behind the head. That's only if the shoulders feel open enough for that. If the upper body's feeling tight, skip it. You're still getting a nice opening with the hands down on the mat. Bring the hands down to the mat if they're back behind the head. Lift the head up. Walk the elbows back in so they're underneath the shoulders. One hand at a time, back up to tabletop. So hands are underneath the shoulders. Walk them forward a little bit so you're reaching forward, hands still down on the mat. And then take this right knee, bring it forward like you're trying to bring it up toward the hands. Bring that right foot out to the left. And now start to slide that right leg over the left leg. So you're on both knees, right legs high up over the left leg, widen the feet, start to sit back. You might even hover the hips above the mat. That can feel like a nice opening for the glutes and the hips. And then eventually we'll come to seated between the feet. So it's go Mukasana legs are just getting into it kind of a funky way. And then once you're seated, Make sure you're not seated on the feet. If you need to prop yourself up on a block, you're welcome to do that. And you can also extend that bottom leg forward. Inhale, reach the arms up. On the exhale, fold down over the legs. So hands come down to the mat, head comes down. Maybe you hook the chin over the front knee if the head's low enough, but just take it easy for this first one. We're just trying to get you warm and not going for the deepest possible hip opening. At least not right out of the gate. Start to lift the chest back up. Keep the hands down on the mat. You'll shift forward back to where we were. So both knees are on the mat. Left foot comes back behind you. Reach that right knee forward up toward the hands. Come back to all fours. All right, other side, left knee goes forward toward the hands. Bring that left foot out to the right. Start to slide the leg back. Feet go wide. Maybe you hover the hips. So like child's pose, but the legs are crossed. And start to set the hips down onto the mat. Make sure they're completely grounded on the mat. Feet are away from you enough so that you're not sitting on them. And then once you can press down into both sit bones, maybe the bottom leg is extended. That's an option. Reach the arms up on your inhale. On the exhale, fold over the legs. 
could be in a different place on this side. Try not to force yourself to go to the same exact spot you were uh, on the first side. Start to lift the head and the chest back up. Keep the hands down on the mat, but you can reach them forward. Shift forward back onto the knees. Bring that left knee up toward the hands. Work your way back to tabletop, all fours. Okay, walk the hands forward up ahead of the shoulders. Turn the index fingers so they're pointing straight forward or maybe a little bit more out if you want more space for the shoulders. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, first downward facing dog. It might feel nice to have the legs a little straighter since we've had them bent for so long. But if you need a bend in the knees, take a bend in the knees. Listen to your own body. Just make sure those feet are at least hip width distance apart. So you can always go wider, but you don't want to go narrower. That takes away space from your lower back. And sometimes it's a habit. You have to constantly be reminded to widen the feet and that's fine. But what's nice in this particular shape is you can see your feet. So it's a good way to check them. Lift the right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Step the right foot all the way through up between the hands. You're coming into a runner's lunge. You can come up onto the fingertips, back knees lifted, unless you need it down. That's fine too. Chest is reaching forward. Hips come down a little bit. Then straighten the front leg, stay high on the ball, of the back foot, modified pyramid pose. Walk the hands back a little bit. That'll give you more space in the back side of the right leg. If you're not feeling anything, then you walk the hands forward. Inhale forward to your lunge, plant the hands, step back, downward facing dog. Left leg reaches up and back. Step the left foot all the way through up between the hands. Runner's lunge. Prop yourself up if you want to on the fingertips, blocks. If it feels like it's too much to reach down toward the mat, especially for your first lunge, sometimes it's nice to keep the chest up a little bit higher. You can stay in the shape longer. It's a nice opening. Straighten the front leg, pull the hips back. Maybe the hands walk back, modified pyramid pose. Keep that back heel lifted as you fold over the left leg. Trying to keep the rounding out of the upper back, easier said than done. Inhale forward to your lunge, plant the hands, step back, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, glide forward to plank pose, lower all the way down onto your stomach, tops of the feet to the mat, hands back by the lower ribs, Cobra Bhujangasana. Stay here for a couple of breaths. This isn't your first back bend. Maybe you hover the hands to see if you can keep the height of the chest, pointing the tailbone back, core hugs in. Lightly set the hands back down and release. Head comes down. Take child's pose. Come up to hands and knees, big toes together. Hip shift back as much as the knees will allow. Forehead comes down. You want the forehead to rest on something, mat, block, whatever you have. So that it's truly a calming posture for you to be in.
And uh, child's pose is always available to you whenever you want it. So don't feel like you need to be cued. Look forward at the hands, come back to downward facing dog, shift forward onto hands and knees, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. See how this one feels. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, step, walk, get the feet up between the hands, go slow, no need to rush. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Do those two more times, same thing, just come up halfway on your inhale, exhale release. Last one, inhale up halfway, Exhale, release. This time, circle the arms all the way up to standing. Bring the hands together overhead, down in front of the heart. Reach the arms forward, palms facing up, staying standing. Right arm on top of left arm. Find some version of eagle arms. So forearms can come together. You could also grab just the shoulders and stay here. That's a nice shoulder opening. Maybe the left fingertips sneak into the right heel of the hand. Shoulders away from the ears, hands away from the face. You want them over the elbows. Stand strong in the legs, core hugs in. Maybe you start to lift the forearms and the gaze. But again, this could be a deep opening for the shoulders, so you don't want to take it too far. And start to bring the elbows back in line with the shoulders. Reach the arms forward, switch. Left arm on top of right. Eagle arms. Maybe you start to lift the chest, the gaze, the forearms. Try not to lift the shoulders. Elbows in line with the shoulders, gaze forward. Bring the arms down by the sides. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Press the knuckles back, widen across the chest, put a little bend in the knees, fold forward over the legs. See if you can keep the fingers interlaced as you come down. Knuckles go back behind the head. If you have to release the hands, that's fine. A strap could be a great way to stay in the shoulder opening if the fingers don't interlace. Just grab a strap between the two hands as close as you can and let the hands fall back behind the head. Switch the grip if the fingers are interlaced. So one finger over, maybe the legs get a little bit straighter. Weights heavier in the balls of the feet, hips are lifting up. Hands come down to the mat, inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, shift forward onto the toes, bend the elbows halfway, chaturanga, all the way down onto your stomach, tops of the feet to the mat, walk the hands back, Ujjangasana Cobra. Exhale, release, downward facing dog, either plank or you could come to hands and knees first before you transition back to downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, walk step, get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold, arms circle all the way up to standing, hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Surya A, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga, cobra or up dog. Keep those legs strong, glutes strong, chest lifted. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look up to the top of the mat, feet up between the hands. 
Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Arms circle all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, hands to the mat, back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga. Inhale up for your back bend. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look up to the top of the mat, bring the feet up to the hands. One more cycle of Surya A before we move on. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Arms circle all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, bend the knees, step back to plank pose. Lower down halfway chaturanga. Inhale up for your back bend. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up and back. So three-legged down dog. Try to keep those right toes pointing straight down. You don't want them going out to the right. If they're going out to the right, then you're opening up the hip and we're trying not to do that in this shape. Walk the hands back to the standing foot. So you're coming into standing splits. Take it easy, it's your first one. So hands can be way ahead of that left foot. Let the head and the neck go. This right leg, the leg that's lifted, step it over to the left behind the left leg. So it's a curtsy squat. Both knees bend, chest can lift. You could even bring the hands together in front of the heart if you feel comfortable with that. If not, hands can stay down on the mat. If the hands are together, bring them back down to the mat, back to standing splits. So that right leg lifts up. Try not to kick the toes out. Walk the hands forward, back to your three-legged downward facing dog. Step the right foot all the way through, up between the hands. Hop the back foot in, seal the heel, warrior one. Square the hips forward, reach the arms forward and up. Interlace the fingers behind the back, Open up across the chest, point the knuckles back, fold forward, humble warrior. So you're welcome to rest the chest on that front thigh, reach the shoulder or the knuckles back behind you. Maybe it's easy for you to bring the torso inside the thigh. That's certainly deeper. Try to keep control of that right hip so it's not swinging out to the right. Then come up halfway, release the arms, come all the way up, warrior one. Hands come down to the mat. Make your way back, downward facing dogs. So maybe you step straight back and stay there. Maybe you take a vinyasa. Or maybe you rest in a pose that's feeling nourishing today, which could be child's pose. Maybe it's something else. Left leg reaches up and back. Walk the hands back toward the standing foot. Find a version of standing splits here. Doesn't need to be your deepest one, just one that's feeling good right now in your practice. Let the head and the neck go. Keep lifting that left leg from the inner left thigh. Then start to bend both knees. Left foot goes out to the left, left leg behind the right leg. As you're looking forward, keep the fingertips down on the mat, or maybe you bring the hands together in front of you. All the weights in the right leg. So that left leg's just a kickstand. 
hands come back down, standing splits, left leg reaches up and back. Walk the hands forward, back to your three-legged down dog, left, left leg stays lifted. Step the left foot all the way through, up between the hands, hop the back foot in, warrior one. This time we interlace the fingers, one finger over. Stretch the knuckles back behind you. Keep that chest open, lead with the heart, bow forward, humble warrior. Back to warrior one, release the clasp of the hands, reach the arms forward and up. Exhale the hands back down to the mat, step back, vinyasa or straight to downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look to the top of the mat, bring the feet up to the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Come to chair pose, Utkatasana. Bend the knees, reach the arms up. From here, arms reach forward. Bring the left arm on top of the right arm, eagle arms. Shift the weight over to the right foot. Left leg on top of the right leg, eagle legs, full Garudasana. Keep the chest lifted, or you could start to fold forward over the legs. Think about reaching the forearms forward if you take that option. If you're folding forward, start to make your way back up to eagle. Chest is lifted. Then come up to standing. Spread the arms. Reach the left leg up. Left foot next to the right foot. Bring the arms back behind you. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Little bend in the knees. Fold forward over the legs. Knuckles back behind the head. Up to you how straight the legs are. Hands come back down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, reach the arms up. Chair pose. Arms forward, right arm on top of left arm, eagle arms. Shift the weight over to the left leg, right leg on top of left leg, full Garudasana eagle pose. Stay here, keep the chest lifted, or if you did it on the first side, maybe you start to fold forward over the legs. If you fold it forward, slowly make your way back up. Keep it steady, controlled. Come up to standing, arms up, right leg forward. Right foot next to the left foot. Interlace the fingers behind the back, one finger over. Stretch the knuckles back behind you. Little bend in the knees as you fold forward over the legs. Let the head and the neck go. Maybe the legs start to straighten. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale full. Bend the knees. Hands to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Down dog or vinyasa.
Right leg lifts up and back, three-legged down dog. Walk the hands back to that standing foot, standing splits at the back of the mat. Maybe the hands come in a little closer to the standing foot. Bring the gaze forward, bend both legs, right foot steps over to the left. Most of the weight's in that left leg. Maybe the hands come up in front of the heart. Right toes as light as you can be. Hands come back down to the mat, standing splits, right leg goes up and back. Walk the hands forward, back to your three-legged down dog. Right foot steps up between the hands, warrior one. Interlace the fingers behind the back, leading with the heart, bow, humble warrior. Come up halfway, hover the chest right over that front thigh. You can keep the fingers interlaced if you want, or just uh, separate the hands and press the palms close together. Come onto the ball, the back foot, warrior three. Shift the weight forward, lift that left leg up. Try to keep the hips level, core hugs in. Bend the standing leg, reach back with the heel of the left foot, warrior one. Release the clasp in the hands, reach the arms up, chest up, gaze up. Exhale the hands back down to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog. Left leg reaches up and back, three-legged down dog. Walk the hands back to the standing foot, standing splits back of the mat. See where it is on this side. Left foot steps off to the right. Keep as much of the weight as you can in that right leg. Bring the hands together in front of the heart, maybe. Hands come down to the mat, back to standing splits, left leg lifts. Walk the hands forward, back to your three-legged down dog. Left foot steps all the way through, up between the hands. Hop the back foot in, warrior one. Arms reach back behind you, interlace the fingers, one finger over, humble warrior. Come up halfway with the chest, point the knuckles straight back or the fingertips if the hands aren't interlaced. Come onto the ball, the back foot, Warrior three, look ahead of you, shift the weight to that left leg, right leg lifts up, right toes point straight down. Bend the standing leg, reach back with the heel of the right foot, warrior one. Arms up, chest up, as much of a back bend as you want here, pubic bone to tailbone, tailbone to pubic bone. Hands come down to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog. Time for a vinyasa if you'd like one. Three breaths in downward facing dog once you get there. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold, find chair pose, Utkatasana. 
this time come all the way up to standing hands come together down in front of the heart. Reach the arms forward, palms facing up, left arm on top of right, eagle arms. Bend the knees, sit like chair pose. Left leg on top of right leg. Stay here or fold forward. And that left foot, there's three options. The left toes can be down on the ground outside of the mat, similar to your squat it can be just out to the side toes spread or hooked behind the right calf slowly come back up to your eagle if you folded forward fly the eagle stand tall on the right leg reach the arms up left leg lifts left foot next to the right foot hands together down in front of the heart take a deep breath in through the nose Back out through the mouth. Arms reach forward, palms up. This time, right arm on top of left. Eagle arms. Sit like chair pose. Right leg on top of left leg. Stay here with your eagle or fold forward. Forearms and elbows reaching forward if you're taking this. Make your way back up to eagle if you folded forward, slowly lifting the chest, keeping everything squeezing together. Stand tall on the left leg, arms up, right leg forward. Right foot next to the left foot, interlace the fingers behind the back, open up across the chest, little bend in the knees, fold down over the legs. Straighten the legs, let the knuckles go back. Switch the weaving of the fingers if the fingers are interlaced. You could be holding a strap. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale full. Bend the knees. Hands to the mat. Back to plank pose. Down dog or vinyasa. Right leg lifts up and back, three-legged down dog. Walk the hands back to that standing foot, standing splits, back of the mat. Maybe you play with grabbing the ankle with one hand or both. Hands to the mat, step that right foot off to the side of the mat, bend both knees, weight in the left leg. Hands can come up in front of the heart if you'd like. Hands come down to the mat, standing splits. Walk the hands forward, back to your three-legged down dog. Right foot steps up between the hands, hop the back foot in, warrior one. Interlace the fingers behind the back, humble warrior. Come up halfway with the chest, point the knuckles back, keep the heart reaching forward, warrior three. Come onto the ball, the back foot, shift the weight forward to the right leg, lift that left leg up. Try to keep the hips level. Back to warrior one. You can release the clasp with the hands, heel down, arms up. Hands come back down to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog. Left leg reaches up and back, standing splits, walk the hands back. Play with your balance a little bit. Maybe the hands get closer to the foot this round. Maybe you grab the ankle with one or both hands. Hands to the mat, left foot out to the side, 
bend both knees. Maybe the hands come together in front of the heart. Keep that right leg strong. Standing splits, hands down, left leg up and back. Walk the hands forward, three-legged down dog. Left foot steps all the way up between the hands. Hop the back foot in, Virabhadrasana one. Interlace the fingers, one finger over, humble warrior. Start to bring the chest up halfway. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Warrior three. Bend the standing leg. Reach back. Warrior one. Release the clasp of the hands. Arms come up overhead. Exhale the hands down to the mat. Using the breath, make your way back to downward facing dog. You can take a vinyasa. Three breaths in downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Come to chair pose, Utkatasana. All the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Bring the hands to the hips, step the left foot back two thirds of the way. So legs are straight, it's not your biggest step, square the hips straight forward, legs are strong. And then a few options with the arms. You can take fists behind the back, reverse fist, elbows back, but we've done a lot of shoulder opening today. So maybe we try something different. Clasp opposite elbows. See what that feels like. That's a tighter variation on the shoulders. Just remember which forearms on top. If you feel like you've got plenty of room, you could bring the hands like together like prayer, turn the fingertips to point up and weave those up the back. Just make sure the palms are touching. Elbows back. Start to come forward, maybe halfway, maybe less. Listen to that lower back. You don't want it to round. Hearts reaching forward the whole time. Elbows away from the mat, shoulders away from the ears. So it's a big upper body opening, but you're also getting into the legs, strengthening them. Don't go lower than halfway. Slowly start to come back up to standing. Keep the arms wherever they are. Once you're standing, hands to the hips, bend that right knee, step the left foot forward, bend the knees, arms up, chair pose. Left leg high up over the right leg, eagle. With the arms, we're bringing right arm on top of left arm. Maybe you stay up, maybe you fold forward. I'm going to stay up this time. I went forward the last several rounds. I'm going to try staying up to change things up. Maybe you change yours up a different way. If you fold it forward, come back up, lift the chest. Reach the arms up, press that left leg forward, stand tall. Left foot comes down next to the right foot. Hands come together, down in front of the heart. Good work. Hands to the hips. Right foot steps back two thirds of the way, square the hips forward, find your arm variation. If you did something asymmetrical uh, with the forms, uh, one on top of the other, switch it the other way. If you did something symmetrical, then you don't have to worry about it. Just come back into that. Stand tall into the legs, chest lifts, start to fold forward, core hugs in. There's an arch in the lower back. Try to keep that there. Once it starts to round, You've gone too far. So you want to find that spot right before that happens. Elbows away from the mat. 
back of the neck is long shoulders away from the ears. Keep lifting the muscles in the legs. Rise back up to standing, go slow. Keep the arm variation that you have. Bring the hands to the hips, little bend in that left knee, step the right foot forward, bend the knees, sit back, chair pose, arms up, right leg on top of left leg, left arm on top of right arm, Garudasana, eagle. Fold forward if you want to, do whatever you did on the first side. And that left leg strong like chair or like your curtsy squats. The chest is forward over the legs. Start to bring it back up. Press into that left leg, arms up, reach the right leg forward, feet side by side, hands together, down in front of the heart. Interlace the fingers back behind the um behind the hips, bend the knees, fold forward over the legs. Switch the grip, other uh, forefinger in front. Hands come down to the mat, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, step the left foot back behind you, coming into a runner's lunge. Reach the arms forward, hovering low over the front thigh. Hands come together right in front of the heart, twist the chest to the right. Maybe you hook that left elbow outside of the thigh. Try to keep the chest lifted, the hips lowering. Maybe you look over the right shoulder. Back knee can always come down or keep it active with it up. Look back down at the mat, hands to the mat, back knee down to the mat, half splits. Shift the hips back, lift the toes up on the right foot, push it forward a few inches, reach the heart forward, keep the chest high for this one, we're gonna change it up. So you have the shape of the legs, chest is reaching forward, spine's long. Maybe you take this left hand and bring it over to the right. So both hands can go over to the right. You're still trying to drag that right heel in and reach the heart forward at the same time. Just a different way to do your Ardha Hanuman. Come back to straight forward with the chest in the hands, slide forward onto the sole of the right foot, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step the left foot up to meet the right foot, inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, exhale fold, fingertips to the mat, right foot steps back, find your runner's lunge, dig into both legs, reach the arms forward, just halfway, hovering over the front thigh, Hands come together right in front of the heart. Open the chest to the left. Maybe hook the elbow outside of the thigh. You can also rest it on top of the thigh. Chest lifts, hips lower. Find that twist. Look back down at that front foot, hands to the mat, right knee down to the mat, half splits. Hip shift back, left foot uh, lifts, push the left heel forward so the hips feel side by side. Lengthen the heart forward, upper back stays long. Maybe the right hand comes over to the left. It's still like you're trying to drag that left heel in toward the body and reach the heart forward toward the left corner of the mat.
Right hand goes back to inside the left leg, slide forward onto the sole of the left foot, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step the right foot up to meet the left foot, inhale up halfway, exhale full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, last vinyasa if you want one on the way to downward facing dog. Skip it if you're done with them. Last downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale in through the nose. Side out the mouth. Bring the knees down to the mat. So you're back in tabletop. Keep the hips right over the knees. We're coming back to puppy dog, what we started out with. So belly hugs in, elbows down to the mat. Walk the elbows forward. Try not to take the hips with you. Forehead comes down to the mat. Hands can come together back behind the head. So more room in the upper body for sure today. Maybe you walk the elbows farther forward and then you feel a little bit more length in the sides of the torso. If you have the hands behind the head, bring them back down in front of you, lift the head up, walk the elbows back. So they're underneath the shoulders and then one hand at a time back up to tabletop, walk the hands a little bit forward. So they're ahead of the shoulders. Same thing we did before slide that right knee up toward the hands, bring the right foot out to the left and then cross the right leg high up over the left leg. Start to sit back between the feet, let the hips touch down, chest lifts up. Make sure you can get both hips down on the mat. If not, bring yourself up on a block or extend the bottom leg forward and just do half the shape with the legs. Open the chest to the right. You could bring that left forearm to the right thigh if you want to, more as a kickstand. You can look to the right over that right shoulder for your twist. Keep the body where it is. Just bring the gaze back forward. Slowly unwind the torso. Reach the arms all the way up on your inhale. Exhale, fold forward over the legs. That bottom leg needs a break. Just extend it forward. You can just keep the right leg bent. Bring the chest up halfway, keep the hands on the mat way out in front of you, shift the weight forward so you come back onto the knees, right knee goes up toward the hands, bring the right knee back underneath the hips. You're back in tabletop, hands are ahead of the shoulders. This time left knee shifts forward, cross the left leg over the right leg, widen the feet, start to sit the hips back between the feet, take your time, see if you get a bit of a stretch on the way. Make sure the hips completely touch down and then sitting up tall, start to open the chest to the left, left fingertips can come back behind you. Right forearm can come to the top of the left thigh. 
inhale to sit up taller, exhale to find a twist without using the right arm. Bring the gaze forward, keep the body in the twist. Slowly unwind the chest. Inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale to fold forward over the legs. And start to walk back in toward the body, bring the hands back behind you, extend the bottom leg and then the top leg. So both legs are out in front of you shift side to side. So you feel even on the sit bones, inhale, reach the arms all the way up, exhale, forward fold, Paschimottanasana, grab the feet if you can, otherwise legs, mat, let the head and the neck go. Bring yourself back up to seated, soles of the feet to the mat, scoot yourself forward, come down onto your back, lift the knees up and the feet. So the knees and feet, the knees are right over the hips, feet in line with the knees. Same thing we started out with, hands to the thighs, push the thighs away from you and the thighs back into the hands, keep the knees together, pressing together, widen the feet. So maybe you can go a little bit wider than you could at the very beginning of class. Maybe this rotation feels a little bit more comfortable because of all the work we did with it for the entire time we were on the mat. Okay, bring the feet back together. Take a happy baby. That'll feel like a whole new world. <laughs> Open up the knees wide. You can keep it easy and just grab onto the backs of the thighs or ankles. If the feet are right there, grab them. Just keep the hips down on the mat. Maybe rock side to side if you want to. Bring the knees back in toward the chest. Close the eyes. Take a big inhale in through the nose. Exhale, Shavasana, you made it. Extend the legs out in front of you, lift the chest, get the shoulder blades underneath you, make yourself comfortable. That might mean covering the eyes with something if you're in a lot of light.
to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Stretch the arms overhead, reach out through the legs, feel that space you made. Walk the feet in, bending the knees, rolling over to your right side if that's comfortable. You can always go the other way or stay on your back. Bring the left hand down in front of you. If you're on your right side, come to a comfortable seat. Once you get there, eyes can be closed. You're sitting up tall, keeping that chest lifted. Bring the hands together in front of you. Slight bow the head. Take a moment, honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit. As well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thanks for sharing your practice today. That was a lot of uh, leg strengthening stuff, one side to the other, a lot of shoulder opening, internal hip rotation, really got in there today. So drink lots of water and enjoy the rest of your day or evening.